It was a really interesting project. We're breaking new ground in using a product, a ceramic surface, and using it in such a way that it hadn't been used before. We wanted to achieve a continuity and a connection to the context, both physically and socially. The demographics of Darling Harbour had changed greatly over time. There was a lot more residents with families living nearby, but they were looking for somewhere to go as a family and take their children to play. So as part of our thinking was how to make Darling Harbour more of an urban parklands. So that was where we introduced ideas like the children's playgrounds uh, and the parklands so it could act as an informal parklands for the people who lived there. For the buildings, each of them was informed by its site and its adjacent context. The convention centre being a harbour front informed by water and reflections. The exhibition centre being adjacent to parklands was more about being of the green and using warm tones and then the ICC theatre was adjacent Chinatown and it was more urban, more city and more about entertainment. So we were looking for a balance between that contrast and continuity. What we were inspired by was the way light interacts with ceramic surfaces and the Opera House is a beautiful example around the world of this, being on the harbour front and the way it reacts with the, the very directional Australian sunlight. Over the course of a day, it changes colour all day long in the way it reflects, so it feels like the building, every time you look at it, it's almost like it's different to the moment you looked at it just a moment ago. And so that changing life is something that we wanted to capture in, in this project, being a public project located on the waterfront as well. The colour is really interesting. We were inspired by the name of the place. So the bay on which the convention centre sits is called Cockle Bay, being cockle shells. So pre-European times, it was a place that the Indigenous people of Australia, the Aboriginals, would gather to collect and eat cockles, and they would create mounds, which are called middens. Uh, and when the Europeans arrived, this bay was surrounded with these middens, and hence it was named Cockle Bay. We were inspired by the colour inside a shell that's sort of pearlescent white and the way it reflects light. And we wanted some capture and make that subtle connection between the building and the history of the place through its colour. It was three reasons, really. One was that idea of how we could capture the quality of light using a ceramic surface and that beauty that we could capture with the Australian sun and give that life to the building and a changing colour between morning, the midday and the late afternoon as the sun set and reflected from it. The other one is the surface texture. We're very interested in buildings having a quality at a long distance, a medium distance and a close distance. And what was really beautiful about a ceramic surface is it has a texture and a grain at a very intimate scale. So even when you're right up close to it, it still has something to give and offer and be of a scale that you can relate to as a human. And then the third point was about longevity. A ceramic surface with an integrated colour and a glazed surface requires very little maintenance. And being on a waterfront site with a lot of salt in the air, we needed to find a product that would have longevity in this environment, but also where we were using it being on the underside of a very high surfeit. Access to it afterwards was difficult, so we wanted to find a product that had minimal maintenance over a long period of time. From a sustainability point of view, the use of ceramic has a really long history in building. What's really beautiful about ceramic materials is just how long they will last. Human beings have been using them for millennia to build buildings. And so that longevity for us means that it's not a product that's going to have to be upgraded or replaced in a very short time. So for us, from a sustainability point of view, is that low maintenance and the longevity of that product. In developing the system, we were using the product in an unusual circumstance where it hadn't been used before, which was upside down and hanging. So the product is uh, on adhesive to a frame, which is then hung from the superstructure above. 
but the local authorities were concerned that over a long time the adhesive might start to let go. Now we were pretty certain that it wouldn't, but we introduced the clips as a second safety in case some of the adhesive did break down over time and we also spent a lot of time working that to make sure that it didn't be detrimental to the overall look and feel of the product. We were exploring the use of a product and a material that hadn't been used in this way before anywhere in the world. Plus we're also using it here in Australia where our codes and the authorities didn't have specific codes to cover its use and how we were using it. Working with the suppliers, our facade engineers and the suppliers' facade engineers, the contractor and the local authorities were able to prove that the product could work in this situation. The really great thing was at the end of it, everyone was proud and happy that we were able to make it work and achieve the outcome. If you saw the number of people going to Darling Harbour prior to the project being done and to after, the number of people have increased greatly and has been really well received, which makes us really proud because ultimately that's what we're trying to achieve as a place that people love.